You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible. The Christian tradition I grew up in persistently claims that Scripture is perspicuous. It's comprehensible by anybody. We can all understand it. Anyone can read it. It's clear. Of course, anyone who's tried to read the Bible a bit knows that that's not quite as simple as it sounds. There are all sorts of bits of the Bible that are very difficult to read. So, what does this tradition of the perspicuity of the Bible really mean? It doesn't mean that every part of the Bible is simple. I think what it does mean is that the Bible as a whole is simple, and that if you grasp the whole, you won't be led astray by the parts. And that's why I hate and despise those people who chop the Bible up into little tiny bits and fragments, and act as if it was a kind of hologram, and each little part contains the whole. It doesn't. The whole contains each little part. Let's illustrate that by going back to the theme of Jesus as the fulfillment of Scripture. I've talked already about Jesus as fulfillment of Scripture, but it's a topic that maybe can do with approaching from more than one angle. I've talked before about the story of Ezra and the foreign wives, but it too is a story that can do with approaching more than once, though most of us would rather not approach it at all. What does it mean to say that Jesus is the fulfillment, not just of some particular scripture, but of scripture as a whole? You see, often when the Bible talks about Jesus as fulfillment, it doesn't only mean that he fulfills this scripture or that scripture, that some Old Testament passage points forward to Jesus. It means that all of scripture points forward to Jesus, that all of scripture is directed to Jesus, and that Jesus fills it out, completes it, or makes it whole or perfect. Here, yeah, that story of Ezra and the foreign wives. How do you make that story perfect? It's a perfect mess as it is. Those poor women married to those guys for who knows how many years, and Ezra and his mates come along from a foreign country returning home to a home they've never been to, and say to the people who are there, get divorced. It's a nice story to approach from the point of view of what would Jesus do. Just imagine that Jesus was transported to Ezra's day, and he was standing there on the edge of the crowd. Or that some of those people involved came up to him and said, What should we do, Master? What do you think he'd say? Yes, Ezra's right, it's in Scripture, divorce your wives. Can't see it, can you? And yet, Ezra was right to be concerned for purity, to be concerned for driving out the worship of foreign gods, all those idols that supported the tyrants of the ancient Near East. Ezra was right, but I have a feeling that the men who didn't want to divorce their wives just because they were of the wrong nationality were right too, and I have a sneaking suspicion that Jesus would have said so somehow. Too often we read scripture in bits, a verse here, a verse there, a story here or a story there if we're ambitious. But scripture isn't like that. Scripture is a whole. We shouldn't read it in bits. We should read it as a sweeping story that takes us from creation to the end of time, and that in doing so changes us. When we do that, all of Scripture points to Jesus in one way or another, even if it's only to cry out for Jesus' presence, to cry out for the reconciliation that only the Son of God can bring. And that, I think, is what the story of Ezra and the foreign wives is doing. So, is the story of Ezra and the foreign wives perspicuous? Is its meaning evident and clear to any reader? No, of course it's not. The only reading that's evident and clear is a nasty, mean, and narrow-minded one. But Scripture as a whole is perspicuous, and the meaning of Scripture as a whole is clearly different, at least on the issue of divorce and foreign marriages, from the meaning of the Ezra passage. The 
perspicuity of Scripture implies the wholeness of Scripture. Amen. God bless. See you next time.